The third gamified assessment platform we'll take a look at is Quizlet Live. Now Quizlet's been around forever. It's probably one of the first tools that you use as a student or as a teacher. It's essentially digital flashcards. But what they did is they designed a game feature within the flashcards. So you take a, a flashcard deck that you created or maybe one that you found and then you can launch a Quizlet Live game. Now a couple reasons why I like this tool that sets it a little bit apart from the others. One, it's collaborative by nature. Kids have to work together because once they're in teams, only one of them actually has the correct answer on their screen. The second is that there's a streak so that you actually have to get a certain number in a row or else you don't win. What helps there is that students that maybe fall behind are still in the running. You're never really out in Quizlet Live. All right, let's take a closer look. The first step is to go to Quizlet. There actually isn't a separate Quizlet Live platform. All you have to do is sign into the regular old Quizlet. If you haven't used it before, you just sign up like you would with just about every other EdTech tool. And once you're in here, you're gonna see that there's a search and create option. If you've never made flashcards before, if you just wanna look for some new sets, you can go to the search. There are thousands of them that are already pre-made. Or you could go in and create your own set. It's very simple to create a set of flashcards. I'm not gonna go through that in the tutorial here, but trust me, it's really simple to do. So once you have a set of flashcards, so this is just a set that I made on NCAA basketball mascots. So what I'll do is on the left side, you see there's a whole bunch of options here in Quizlet, but the only one that we're gonna focus in on for this video is the live game. So this is how you would launch a Quizlet Live for your students. So I clicked on live, there's a quick guided tour, you don't need to necessarily watch that, uh, and then you're gonna click create game. Now once you create your game, there's two different versions of this that you can set up. You can create a random teams version where Quizlet will place your students into teams randomly, or you can set up with individuals playing so that they'll play the game on their own. I would actually say if it's a live class experience, the team version is very popular. If it's more of a remote learning experience or something that you'd like students to do uh, individually, obviously the right side would be for you. So I'm gonna choose the random teams version. So the next screen is pretty simple. You just determine whether or not you want the term or the definition up top. Completely up to you which way you wanna do it. Both ways work as far as the gameplay goes. So now that I've launched the game, I have this wonderful game music in the background, and there's a few different ways that you can have kids join. They can either go directly to quizlet.live and enter that code in, you can copy and share the game link, or you can share out this QR code if they're using the Quizlet app. On the right screen here, you can see what it would look like for the students that go directly to the quizlet.live. I'm just going to add in that join code. And you can see on the left side here, I have my first player has joined. You can also see on the left here that it says waiting for three plus players. What that just means is that for the team mode to work, you need to have a minimum of four players in the game. So if you have fewer players that are going to be using this, then you would have to use that individual mode once you fire up the Quizlet Live. So you see that once I started the game, it put the players into two different teams. And on the right side, you can see that this player was team, put on Team Panda, and just as a quick visual, it's really easy to see that they are on Team Panda. And you'll see that the teammates, Tom and Lydia, will be actually working together. So what will happen is on the question, the answer will only show up on one of those player screens. And you'll see this can actually work for up to four players on a team. So let's start the game so you can see what it looks like from both the teacher standpoint and the student view. All right, so now the game is live. On the left side, this is the teacher view. You can see how each team is doing and, and how their streak's going. Streak just means how many in a row that they've got. On the right, you'll see an example of one of the players. So you see that this is uh, my team. These are my four options. But then also Lydia on my team has four options as well. And this is where that collaborative nature comes into play. So I may have the right answer on this, but I may not. So I'd actually have to talk to Lydia to see if she has the answer on hers. So say we collaborate and we say, all right, the answer is actually the sooner. So I click sooners, it gives me the correct answer. And then you can see up at the top left that I have my streak. So if I didn't see my answer here, then it would be on Lydia's screen and she would actually have to answer the question. So not everyone on the team has to answer each time, just the person that has the correct answer on their screen. All right, so just to give you another view of what this would look like is this is just two different screens, both of the teammates, so Tom's on the left and Lydia's on the right. So you can see that the question was Gonzaga and the question asks, what is the mascot for Gonzaga? So you can see I have volunteers, bulldogs, sun devils, and musketeers on the left. On the right, I have the Highlanders, Sooners, Quakers, and Blue Jays. So we would have to just discuss between ourselves which one is the actual correct answer. So I'm gonna choose Bulldogs. 
All right, so next up it says Creighton, so I would have to choose the next correct answer. So we would again have to talk with each other to see which was the correct answer. So I can talk with Lydia and say, hmm, what is Creighton? I'm gonna say they're the Blue Jays. And there we go. So that's how it would work with that collaborative feature. You can see that each one of these gets removed after you answer one correctly. All right, so this is the end screen. It says, congratulations, Tom and Lydia win. And if I go back to my main screen for the teacher, what I can do is uh, go through the actual statistics from the game. So if I click here, it'll actually go through some of the main ones that uh, students got correct, as well as things that they maybe had misconceptions on. So this is a, a nice way to do a quick end of game review, particularly the ones that most of your students uh, actually got incorrectly. So if I wanted to play again, I could click that button, it would shuffle up the teams and the teams could play uh, with new partners with the same set of cards, or I can exit the game and go back to the main Quizlet menu. So there you have it. That's how you would launch and run a Quizlet Live with your class. A really nice tool that has some collaborative features and that streak feature so that students are never really out of the game. They're always in it till the end.